I would like to reintroduce myself uh, to everyone in the VNTV audience. My name is Dana Chain, and I have been on VNTV in the past for special occasions and events like today. Without further ado, please welcome Vivian and Elisa to VNTV. So please introduce yourself to everyone. Hello, everyone. Chào quý vị, em tên là Vivian Nhật Hân Nguyễn Đỗ và em là Hoa hậu Việt Nam San Diego năm 2022. Em 19 tuổi và em đang học ngành y khoa chuyên về phụ nữ. Em tham gia Hoa hậu này để làm gương cho mấy các em nhỏ thế hệ sau biết về tiếng Việt và văn hóa Việt Nam. Và Hoa hậu này là cơ hội cho em đứng trước đám đông để có sự tự tin trong việc học và việc làm. À, xin chào quý vị, tên em là Elisa. I'm a sinh viên cao học ở trường đại học UC San Diego. I am the first princess of Miss Vietnam San Diego 2022. And I initially joined this pageant because I wanted to connect with the Vietnamese community in San Diego as well. Thank you. So, um, on behalf of VNTV and the VNTV audience, I would like to hear your thoughts about on these questions. So let me start on the first one. With the positive and negative impact of social media, how would you recommend dealing with body shaming? That's a great question. And I'd like to start off first with saying that all bodies are beautiful. And I think body shaming is an aspect of how not only society, but also media really influences how we traditionally see our bodies or beauty in itself. And in dealing with body shaming is to understand that it is a very wide negative influence and it's not a projection of ourselves but a projection of others insecurities and so in thinking about body shaming to help deal with body shaming is to understand that our self-image is what we believe in ourselves and not necessarily the idea that our bodies are something that should a certain way because the wolf has told us before to do so. So let me go to the next question. What is your greatest fear or biggest insecurity? Um, my biggest fear and insecurity in a way um, is my social anxiety. Because of the pandemic, I, it really has like affected my social skills and I've worked really hard throughout my years to hone and be able to speak but as the pandemic continued those skills of being in, being able to interact as well as talk to people on like a very personal level has been affected and so nowadays when I go out it's I get a little nervous I get a little anxious that I'll have a bad social interaction or I'll say something and screw up and make it seem as though I want it like a negative impact or a negative effect on that person, but that's not what I really want. And so my biggest fear and insecurity in a way is my ability to socialize with others. So if that is your most worry, do you have plan or what do you think that could help you to overcome that? Like it doesn't have to be right away, but one step at a time. So have you been successful on certain occasion to overcome your insecurity? I think one step of overcoming that insecurity is also remembering that everyone is a little nervous when they're talking to someone and they're so worried about themselves and presenting themselves in a certain way that they have no time to be thinking about you in that sense. I also believe that a little bit of mindfulness, even being really focused on the breath or focusing on surroundings in that present moment helps me ground myself for the current interaction. Okay. So my third question, if someone experiences oh, uh, if someone experiences cyber cyberbullying, what would you tell them 
and how could you help them overcome it? Well, with technology and social media nowadays, um, we can't deny that cyberbullying has become a prevalent issue, especially among today's youth. My advice for the youth today is to don't be afraid to reach out to a trusted friend or family member. It helps to talk about what is affecting you and we don't know what other people are going through. So it is okay to reach out to someone and be open about how you're feeling. In addition, we can also educate people and our youth especially to be a responsible internet citizen and always keep in mind that everything we say does come around and it affects other people around us. And, and you're right, uh, you know, before we talk to each other, so we aware of what we're saying, but with, you know, messaging, sometimes you tap away these messages and not reread them, and it can be very hurtful. So you're right, we should be mindful about what we're saying, online or offline. And I think I encourage only you to spend more time interact one person at a time instead of just online. 90, 95%, right? Yes. And okay. to add on to that, mm -hmm. it is so easy nowadays to type out a response, mm -hmm. to type out something yes. online in a matter of seconds and post it. But what you say online stays online and it can impact someone for a long a time. A long time, definitely. So let me ask you, since we mentioned a lot about our thought and our sharing, have you guys experienced cyberbullying? Personally, I haven't experienced cyberbullying directed towards myself but I've seen it online and a lot of people online can be very, very cruel. A lot of people have different opinions and people online are free to share what they think. I would say the closest that cyberbullying has come to me is, you know, on, on Facebook, you know, sometimes people have things to say about the way you look and the way we present ourselves. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, I don't know who those people are, and I usually just let that go or talk to someone about it. How about you, Elisa? Oh, I have um, experienced cyberbullying, and in the way, adding on to Vivian, it very much is letting it go because they don't really know you, and what they do know is only this image you see on, on the screen. And so letting them go and just not adding to the fuel by talking or at Com replying to them really influences if they continue or not. So but it's hard, correct? It is hurtful. Yeah. So how do you overcome it? Or how, how do you suggest others to overcome cyberbullying? I believe you really should have a support system talking to someone you trust or your friends because they know you better than this person, this faceless person on the internet. Or your parents, right? Yeah. Because it's hard for us to come to our parents and talk about cyberbullying or something that hurting you. But I think that at the end of the day, our parents know us best and that they want the best for you. So let me go to the next question. What do you think is the most important quality of being Miss Vietnam in San Diego? In other words, what do you think are the most important qualities in a person? Well, to start off, I think that there are three important qualities that Miss Vietnam San Diego should have. Um, being in a pageant, you must have a lot of confidence in yourself and you know yourself best and you have something to bring to the table and share with others. And I think that believing in yourself allows you to carry out your duties confidently. Secondly, you must also be accountable for your actions because Miss Vietnam San Diego is a representative of her community and we are a public figure. So everything you do uh, reflects on our community. So it is so important to take a moment to think about your actions and think about what you're saying and just be responsible for yourself and the others that you're working with. And thirdly, it is important to communicate and be a team player because all of us on the Royal Court feel that it is important to always check in with each other, always make sure that we're on the same page with one another and our directors. And it is so important that we can get along and carry out our duty, duties together. You know, you're actually on point with the three um, very vital uh, character that you should have in a person. 
Um, because besides you mentioned about you need to hold accountable for your action, so we speak of that in our family household all the time. That you know our parents always say you have to hold accountable for what you have done, right? But now being the face of the community is even more important because you represent not just yourself but everybody else, especially your generation, correct? Yes. How about you, Alyssa? What do you think the most three important quality in a person? I think maybe you hit it on the nail. Like I can't come up with any other judgment. <laughs> okay. Was very well That's fair. I agree as well. Perfect. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Um, I would also like to say that those qualities don't just apply to pageantry, but also outside of pageantry in our work in our school life, because we are going to be working with so many different people in our everyday lives, interacting with them. So those qualities are especially important um, when we are in school and working among people in our community. And you don't have to have those qualities right now or immediately. I mean, we all. Work at it and be a better version of ourselves each day. So I don't. I always say to my daughter, it's not mistakes, it's lesson. So every lesson you learn, it will make you a better version of yourself. So what have you learned through the process of being selected and being Miss Vietnam San Diego 2022? Would you recommend our young audience to join the contest and why? What I've learned through this pageant process is to build more self-confidence and that self-confidence is a lot of, as we were talking about, lessons to be learned as well as practicing and learning how to be Miss Vietnam San Diego in a way. Um, I would recommend the pageant to young Vietnamese American women because it does really help with empowering yourself, self-love, as well as confidence, because as you start at a very budding space at the beginning, and as you continue through the practice process, practice process, you learn, you build, and you grow. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think not only just me, but like a lot of the other contestants also built and grew their self-confidence and love for themselves through the pageant process. So is there, uh, was there any like uh, mishap throughout the process that you experienced that you think that it's actually a great experience, a lesson to have? I think the mishap that I experienced was particularly a pageant day because everything kind of goes a little awry. Like mm -hmm. nothing goes very perfectly and to just go with the flow and like continue to move on. I um, left a, my alley with a friend um, in her car, like one of the contestants' car, and as she came to the practice tents or stage tents, we saw that my alley pants were missing. And so we had to run around, go back to her car, and hope for the best that my alley pants were there, because if not, then there's a backup plan. Luckily, there was my alley pants in her car, just like lying on the ground. But being able to maneuver through, maneuver through mm -hmm. the stresses and mm -hmm. the imperfections really mm -hmm. helped um, me get through pageant day or even learning to maneuver and go with the flow of these tiny little mishaps. Yeah, it's the, how daily always involves stress is inevitable to avoid stress. But I think stress is the key to help us to be stronger each day and to be very resilient to these kind of mishap because at the end it's not the to win or to not to win but the experience and the time that you spend with our community are most important. Right. How about you? Well part of why I joined this pageant was to really gain some skills for my work and school life such as pub public speaking. Public speaking is so important when dealing with nursing and healthcare topics and it is so important that we communicate with others in a timely manner and learn how to speak up and voice our thoughts. So I hope that by joining this pageant I can continue to improve upon those skills. Another important point that I wanted to touch on is 
that I wanted to practice my Vietnamese and really engage with my community and culture. I always hear my parents and a lot of the older generation say that there's a lot of disconnect between the mm -hmm. older definitely yes the older parents, grandparents and between the younger generation and I wanted to encourage the Vietnamese youth to practice their Vietnamese and engage in these cultural holidays and traditions so that we can really communicate and talk with our with the older generation about what it's like to be Vietnamese in America. Okay, so my last question, either one of you can answer the question. Uh, you represent the face and the voice of the community. What are your immediate goals or plans for helping the community? Well, as of right now, the Royal Court of Miss Vietnam San Diego, we've discussed reaching out to disproportionately affected communities and talking to them about basic necessities and providing hygiene kits, food, and water. But we are also attending community events where we get to interact with the broader community in San Diego and expose ourselves to all the different people that live here and provide resources so that we can encourage the youth in San Diego to reach out to these communities and help them. Oh, wow, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and for sharing your valuable advice. I wish you both the best of luck and hope that you can make small changes to someone you get the opportunity to help. I have a friend um, told me one phrase that I really love, be the rainbow to someone cloud. And though through those experiences, I hope you can be a better version of yourself every day and make the world a better place for all of us. Thank you again for watching. And I wish you great health and happiness.